Hello, Dave from Road CC here. Well, we've come to the end of the summer, and uh, after a summer of not actually doing very much riding, it's time to get back into training. Now, if you've ever done any training, any structured training, then you'll probably have tried a bit of indoor training, maybe with the turbo trainer. Um, you may already have heard of Watt Bike, but what we have here is the new Watt Bike Atom. Now, when I first heard that Watt Bike were making a new trainer, I wasn't that excited because the old one was more of a closed system. It's the kind of thing you find in a gym where you'd sit on it and you'd, and you'd do the workouts based on the, the screen that they provide. Um, but now we've moved into a new era. We've got things like Zwift, we've got things like Trainer Road, a lot of people on them training in virtual reality, getting their own training programs. And this bike, the Watt Bike Atom, is designed specifically for that kind of thing. So instead of the screen, you've got an iPad up here. It's designed specifically to take an iPad or a tablet um, and it's connected to that via Bluetooth. Now, this has got all sorts of connectivities. Um, if you're using it with an iPad, you'll probably be using it on a Bluetooth connection because that's native to the iPad. You don't have to add anything. But it's also AMP Plus capable and it's also AMP Plus FEC capable, which means you control it from something like a Garmin. That's another possibility. The other thing that you can do is if you've got a, a heart rate strap, like a Garmin strap that's, that's AMP Plus that you use outdoors, you can transmit your heart rate data through your Watt bike, through Bluetooth to your iPad. So you don't need to have a separate Bluetooth strap. It will also work with a Polar heart rate strap. One of the main ways that this Watt bike differs from the original Watt bike is that it has a magnetic resistance unit. That's electronically controlled, so you need to have your Watt bike plugged in. Um, that wasn't the case with the old Watt bike, but it's not really an issue. This is a 44, 45 kilo unit, and you're not really going to be moving it around very much. Um, you can control the resistance on the Watt bike Atom using these hoods. They have built in buttons at the front, plus and minus buttons, and you can move through a range of 22 gears. And what the gears do is they alter the resistance of the magnetic unit, so it feels like you're shifting up and you're shifting down. So the Watt Bike Atom is natively measuring power. Watt Bikes say that it's accurate to within 2% and will give you up to 2000 watts resistance. So the plus or minus 2% is about the same as most other power measuring devices that you'd find on, a, on an outdoor bike or that you might use indoors on your trainer. You can see that here I'm using the Watt Bike with some Garmin Vector 2 pedals. Um, we don't need the power data from those, but we'll be benchmarking it against the pedals, which we know to be quite accurate, to see how the Watt Bike gets on. So this is a bike that's designed to fit all riders, and as such it has to be very adjustable. So you've got a lot of adjustability going on here. Obviously you can change the saddle height. So just releasing this gives you a lot of adjustability, up to a limit of 83 centimetres from the bottom bracket to the top of the saddle. Now I'm 1 meter 89 and that is my saddle height. So if you are taller than 1 meter 89 or you have longer legs and you need a saddle height that's higher than 83 centimeters, you'll have to go over the limit, um, which obviously what bike I'm not gonna recommend, but there is quite a lot of leeway in there as you can see. As well as altering the saddle height, you can alter the fore aft adjustment. There's eight centimeters of adjustment along the saddle rails here. And also you can adjust the, the tilt of the saddle like you would on your own bike. So you have the same kind of adjustability at the front. Um, if you undo this lever, you can move the bars up and down through quite a big range. So 20 or 25 centimetres of, of adjustability there. And again, about eight centimetres of fore aft adjustability here. So pretty much whatever size rider you are, you should be able to get yourself set up as you would be on your road bike or your time trial bike. So what we're going to do now is we're going to briefly set this up. I haven't turn the iPad on yet and I haven't set up the Watt bike so we're just going to go through the process and uh, see how easy that is. Set up the bike to my, uh, to my size and, and get the app running. So let's go.
so here we are in the uh, new Watt Bike app. There's a bunch of stuff we can do down here. So if we look in tests, there's a 20 minute test, three minute test, a combined test and a sub max test in there. There's a bunch of climbs that Watt Bike have worked on in um, conjunction with VeloViewer. So you can do the Alpdoers, Box Hill, Mont Ventoux, Monte Grappa, Sacalobra and Winnet's Pass. I expect they'll be adding more. And then we've got a bunch of workouts here. So there's some in here in, in endurance, there's some in speed work, and then warm up and cool down. And there's a bunch of other stuff. So there's grand tour challenges, there's some, some climbing drills, some breakaway drills in there, some time trial drills. And also high intensity training, some uh, different workouts in there. If we move over to here, We've got a bunch of different plans. So there's a, a 16 week sportive plan and, a, and another one for a higher level. And then for general fitness, there's an army 16 week plan in there. Again, Watt Bike will be adding more stuff into here. We haven't um, paired the Watt Bike yet with this app. Um, to do that, first we just go into Just Ride. And when we press play, we can find the Watt Bike Atom that we want, which is the one at the top there, Watt Bike 0025. So now we've paired the trainer with the app, we can also pair the heart rate belt. If we search for a heart rate belt, hopefully we'll see my Amp Plus belt coming up in the list. And there it is. So here we are in the um, in the Just Ride section of the Watt Bike app. Um, we can see a bunch of data down here. I've got my power, my heart rate from my Amp Plus heart rate monitor. We've got my cadence, elapsed time and lap time. And also my gear here. And you'll see that if I get them onto these fake hoods and click the buttons, I can move up and down through the gears. There's 22 gears. And in the middle at the top, we've got what's uh, commonly known as the Watt Bike Sausage. So this is a graphical representation of where I'm putting down power in my pedal stroke. At the moment, I'm only putting about 75 watts through the um, Atom, so my sausage is moving about all over the place. My, uh, my pedal stroke is not very smooth. If I move up my gears a bit so that I'm putting in more resistance, you'll see that my power is rising. So now we're looking at about 180, 190 watts. And you can see that the sausage is getting a bit smoother. Now the idea with those two arrows on the left and the right is to try and keep them in the green section. And what that means is you're putting pedal force through on more of the stroke. So you're kicking at the, bot kicking at the top, putting at the bottom, and having a smoother pedal stroke all the way around. You'll notice that if I move up to a high resistance gear, when I get out of the saddle, the shape changes quite dramatically because I'm only putting pedal force through on the downstroke. So here we are in Zwift. Um, and to get the Watt Bike Atom to pair with the Zwift app, um, should be just a simple case of clicking power source. And there it is, the Watt Bike Atom. So if we pair with that, we'll see that Zwift knows that it's a controllable trainer and we've got cadence there as well. So we can go in and we can just ride. So that's the Watt Bike Atom. I'm looking forward to reviewing it. Um, I've got to move it from here in the spacious and photogenic conservatory to um, behind the bed in the spare room, which is where I'm allowed to keep it. But 
I'll put in the hours on it and look out for a review soon on Road CC. If you've got any questions about this bike, then ask them in the comments below and we'll try and answer them. And don't forget to like and subscribe this channel for more like this on Road CC.